नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टी स्पेशल लाइव फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम ऑफ टीचिंग लर्निंग इंटरवेंशन फॉर इंक्लूसिव क्लास रूम आई एम तानवी खुराना एंड ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु स्टार्टिंग इन क्लास टेंथ एंड दिस इज एन इंग्लिश क्लास वेयर वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी चैप्टर नंबर थ्री द मिड नाइट विजिटर फ्रॉम योर बुक फुट प्रिंट्स विदाउट फीट द सप्लीमेंट्री रीडर If you have any questions any queries please reach out to us if you have read this chapter and there's something that uh, you haven't understood or there's something that you want clarification for please reach out to us you can simply give us a call on our number that is 8800440559 and if you want to reach out through us uh, with the help of the email id let me please provide you the email id which is dth.class10@ciet.nic.in let me tell you that this is going to be an amazing read uh, the midnight visitor and i am all excited to read this entire chapter let me please introduce you to our sign language interpreter whom you can see on your screens as well she is miss pracy pracy a very warm welcome to you Along with Pracy, we have the guest who will be explaining us this entire chapter in detail. Please welcome Dr. Rajni Jemini, ma'am. A very warm welcome. Hello, ma'am. Is a lecturer in English from Rajkiya Pratibha Vikas Vidyalay, Lajpat Nagar, New Delhi. So once again, ma'am, a very warm welcome. And let's just understand uh, the main objectives, the learning objectives of this entire chapter. Would you like to discuss those, please? Yes, Tanvi. Today we have a very interesting uh, lesson. It's a detective story, um, the Midnight Visitor. Yeah. So, like you can hear in the name itself, there is lot of suspense, there is irony, and it is lot of fun. So, let, let's ha let's have a look as to what we have in the Midnight Visitor. So, uh, like you know that this series goes out specially for our. Uh, 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 challenged children, uh, uh, children with uh, different disabilities. So we have tried to make the lesson uh, student friendly. So as you can see, I have the name also um, uh, in Braille, and I would request all the teachers also to you know use the Braille converters. And mm, okay, so. Uh, 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 this is the braille converter and as you can see there is a visitor there is a visitor outside there is a visitor outside the window and it's full of scary expectation so tanvi are you feeling scared a little bit yes and there is a dark figure outside and the midnight visitor is waiting to do what and that is something that we are going to find out so the learning objectives for today are uh, we are going to be looking at comprehending the plot and unique characters and we will be analyzing the character of ausible and we would engage in creative and critical thinking questions so uh, i hope our students are looking forward to what the lesson today is absolutely ma'am not just the students i am also looking forward to what this entire chapter is all about so uh, would you like to tell us that who has written this story because the authors are also uh, you know they have uh, something very mysterious about them Yes so uh, this lesson is written by Robert Arthur who was an American writer and he was famous for mystery and suspense stories and uh, the midnight visitor is a typical story written by Robert Arthur that exemplifies his skill in building tension employing irony and giving a very satisfying climax and through his writing he challenged the readers expectations and left them guessing till the very end so uh, let's let's read our story and find out but before that i want to ask you students what comes to your mind when you hear the word secret agent so ma'am if i can answer this question if we talk about secret agents we have seen so many movies and uh, this particular tune of course we are all familiar with 
uh, James Bond and uh, Sherlock Holmes and what not. The list is very long. Yes. So, so the moment we say a spy or a secret agent, uh, we have in mind, you know, a muffled figure wearing, you know, shades and uh, very lean and athletic and, you know, someone who is a very, very attractive figure. Mm -hmm. But uh, our detective or our secret agent is someone who is totally different from a typical one. So, as you can see, we have Ausable and Ausable did not fit any description of a secret agent. And as you can see, these are, you know, tactile cutouts and so our visually challenged children can also touch it and describe what kind of a person Ausable is. So, Tanvi, if I may ask you, what kind of a person do you see? Mm, I can see a fat man mm -hmm. and uh, he's wearing a coat, but uh, the coat doesn't actually fit and uh, he is happy. He's not wearing any cap, any shades or uh, he doesn't have uh, uh, any binoculars or you know, mm -hmm. anything in his hand. So, he's looking happy, like you said, doesn't fit into any of the spy characters. Yes. So, uh, we have uh, Ozzy and we also have Fowler who is someone who is accompanying Ausable and Fowler is a writer who, uh, who is looking for some adventure and that is why he is with uh, Ausable uh, and as of now he is quite disappointed because uh, one the secret agent is not secret agent like and secondly there has not been any adventure or any uh, romantic uh, encounters or uh, you know there is there is nothing glamorous about Ausable and they are walking down the musty corridor of a gloomy French hotel. So, the hotel is also cheap not like what we see in James Bond movies uh, nothing fancy and Fowler is feeling very let down and it is a small room on the sixth and top floor of uh, of the hotel and this is scarcely a setting for um, a romantic adventure and uh, it is mentioned clearly although nowadays we would probably not say it in these words uh, uh, but uh, the writer has written very clearly that Ausable is fat, very fat and he also has the accent, he has the American accent which he had never really lost okay. uh, al although he is now working in Europe and uh, we have uh, introduced two characters to you, we have introduced the character of Ausable and mm -hmm. Fowler, Fowler to you. We also have one more character and that is Max. Now, Max is your typical cunning rival spy uh, who is after a top secret report. So, as you can see, he has the gun in hand and he is what you would expect a spy or secret agent to be like. And as you can see, for our visually challenged children, we have used uh, the names of the characters in Braille uh, so that they are also able to connect to these characters. And Moving on with the story, uh, if we look at the setting of the story also, this is also very unusual. Uh, instead of any glamorous um, hi-fi place, we have a small cramped hotel room uh, and the description establishes that it is not a typical setting for adventure. And uh, would, our, you, yeah, uh, would you like to read out uh, certain passages, certain paragraphs of uh, the story ma'am? Uh, yes. So, uh, like I have told you that uh, Fowler, the writer, yeah. he is very disappointed and how do we know that he is disappointed? Is um, It is mentioned in the words of Ausable himself. He says you are disappointed, you were told that I was a secret agent, a spy dealing in espionage and danger. You wished to meet me because you are a writer, young and romantic. You envisioned mysterious figures in the night, the crack of pistols, drugs in the wine. Instead, uh, you have me. 
So, uh, the whole setting is explained through uh, the words of Ausible and who we are uh, you know told has a VZ accent. Now, what do we mean by VZ is that you know he is suffering from asthma. So, he is not someone who has very loud and clear voice, he is, he is someone who who has the V's, the sound of the V's, okay. uh, which which is typical of people, you know, who suffer from Asthma. asthmatic mm. issues. But uh, then he goes on to say, take cheer my young friend, presently you will see a paper, a quite important paper for which several men and women have risked their lives. Come to me, someday soon that paper may well affect the course of history, in that thought is the drama, is there not? Mm. So that is how, you know, the setting is set. And we know that although uh, the setting does not look very adventurous, but there is something uh, dangerous that is going to happen. happen. So, there is the expectation and there is anxiety and the students as they read are getting that you know feeling of danger coming their way. And just as they enter the room, so till now they were walking down the corridor of that uh, cheap hotel room in France, but as they enter you see that there is a man waiting for them with gun in hand and now the setting from moving from not adventure like to suddenly there is lots of danger and adventure. So, uh, and one does not know what is it that Ausible is going to do and what can he do. So, the uh, secret agent Max is there and he has his gun to their, to their heads and, but as you can see he is not at all, Ausible is not at all disturbed. He says, Max you gave me quite a start, I thought you were in Berlin, Berlin but what are you doing here in my room? So, he is someone who is calm, uh, but who shows that uh, he is upset by the arrival of Max in his room. So, uh, Tanvi, may I ask you to be Max for us today? Absolutely. Uh, mm. So, Max, the report, mm. he murmured, mm. the report that is being brought to you tonight concerning some new missiles, I thought I would take it from you. Mm. It will be safer in my hands than in yours. Right. So, they are all uh, ready for an encounter and this is how our story begins. Ma'am, uh, mm. this is the story, uh, this is how the story begins like you said mm. and uh, if you would like to summarize the whole story in just a few words, mm. can you do that for our viewers please? Yes, so, so uh, I mean I would uh, ask all the students to read it very carefully but for the program because we do not have that much time, we will uh, try to tell you the story in short that it begins with Fowler as we have seen uh, and Fowler is looking for some adventure, he meets Ausible and is initially disappointed because of the setting and because of Ausible's um, appearance and manner because he is not, uh, he does not uh, appear to be your typical stereotypical uh, spy. But the tension escalates when Max who is a cunning rival spy breaks into Ausible's hotel room and demands an important report about the new missiles. With a gun in hand, Max threatens Ausible determined to take the report by force. But thinking quickly, Ausible cooks up an elaborate lie describing in great detail a non-existent balcony that is attached to his room and his convincing storytelling skills and vivid descriptions make Max actually believe that there is a real balcony outside his hotel window. So, ma'am, what is so uh, special about this particular balcony? Would you like to explain a little bit uh, uh, of the layout of this particular balcony? Yes. So, uh, Tanvi, as you can see in the picture, mm -hmm. uh, the both both our characters enter from the room, uh, door of the room that is the entrance, and uh, or behind at the center of the room, Max is standing with his gun in hand, and behind Max there is a window. Now. Uh, Ausible cooks up that lie that the balcony which is, uh, which is, which belongs to the next uh, room also extend under his own window. So, uh, that is the lie that you know he cooks up and uh, 
just as uh, you know he is talking about it the situation intensifies as there is a knock at the door which Ausubel claims is the police and you know Max uh, who is afraid of being captured by the police decides to flee through the imaginary bal balcony and falling for he falls for Ausubel's you know story. The climax arrives when Max attempts to escape through the balcony. Now Tanvi what do you think is going to happen when someone tries to jump onto a balcony and there is no balcony? Oh, so uh, the person will fall and yes. then uh, he or she will break uh, his bones maybe? <laughs> no, they, they actually die because we, we have been told oh. that uh, you know the hotel room was on the top floor which oh. was the sixth floor. So someone falling from the sixth floor is definitely going to die. Die, yes. So uh, he, he, he falls from there and uh, you know then the waiter enters with drinks from the door. So that was the quick thinking of Ausubel because uh, at the door when he said there is police waiting outside which is knocking to enter, it was not the police, it was actually just a waiter who had brought drinks for Ausubel and Max. So as you can see that the short story is very cleverly crafted tale, it is full of mystery, it is full of intrigue yes. and uh, Robert Arthur has actually used plot twists and narrative techniques to engage the reader and Ausubel proves that uh, underestimating based on appearance can be misleading. So not only is it a fun story, we also get to understand not to you know judge a book by its cover and not to you know uh, believe in someone just because they do not look the part. Uh, so we should not really underestimate people, uh, should not really stick to stereotypes when we are thinking about you know judging people's characters. So that is one important learning from the lesson. And uh, there is a narrative technique that uh, one uses in this particular chapter, would you like to discuss that ma'am? Yes, so it is told from the third person perspective which uh, creates mystery and suspense and uh, there are lots of twists that keep the reader engaged. So uh, the narrative technique is something that all our uh, students can learn. And would you like to discuss the keywords in detail with explanation please? Yes, so uh, if we talk about you know the uh, three very important words that we learn from this lesson is first one is presence of mind and uh, we talk about the presence of mind in terms of Ausubel's character, how he has the ability to remain calm and act constructively even in times of emergency or crisis. And the story can be described as a story full of suspense and suspense is a state or feeling of excitement or anxious uncertainty about what may happen next. And finally irony is important because irony is all about contrast between what is expected and what actually occurs, you know what uh, what is said and what is implied and you know a difference between appearance and reality. So these are important uh, things that we need to keep in mind, some important words that we uh, need to learn from the lesson. Okay. Uh, students are you ready for some activity? I am sure they are ma'am. Okay, let's, uh, let's have a small quiz okay. then let us see if our students have followed uh, uh, the lesson or not. So my first question is what was Fowler's first impression of Ausubel? So students you have your choices right there and uh, Tanvi now you are going to play my student yeah. and uh, here is the test for you. So what do you think uh, was the Fowler's first impression? If I, if I uh, read out all the options I can say the first line that we read from one of the passages that I, uh, I know that you are disappointed. So disappointed is the right answer. Right, yes, yes. So students well done, well done all of you who answered correctly. Uh, the next one is what does Ausubel claim about the balcony? So um, um, you have your four options there, what do you think uh, Ausubel said about the balcony? Mm. That uh, it is inaccessible. Mm. Uh, and you also have another option. It belongs to the next apartment. Yes, yes, yes. So, so it belongs to the next apartment but it was never there, I mean that is the true, uh, true story. But yeah. uh, Ausubel actually cooks up this elaborate lie to, uh, to find uh, a way to escape from Max and his gun. So <laughs> someone who was uh, so impressive 
but someone who was as unassuming as Ozobel could get the better of him. Yeah. How does Max plan to escape? I'm sure uh, everyone knows the answer for mm. that, uh, through the window onto the supposed balcony. Yes, yes. So he does that and instead of escaping, he ends up dead on the pavement outside. Yes. And what was the knocking at the door actually? Mm, that was uh, the waiter with the drinks. Yes, so he had, he had brought a, a glass, uh, glass and a few drinks for the visitor. And uh, so students, you have done very well. The quiz was really interesting. But let's see if you are able to put the story in order. So I have uh, you know, given you a jumbled list of sentences. And so if we look at it, there was a knock at the door. We don't know that's not, we know that this is not the first thing that happens. Mm -hmm. So, what do you think is the first thing that happens? Uh, Fowler feels disappointed upon meeting Ozabel. Yes, Tanvi, you are absolutely right there. And what happens after that? Mm. Then uh, Max appears with a gun. Mm -hmm. uh, but before that, they need to enter Ozabel's room. Ozabel and Fowler enter Ozabel's room. Lovely, lovely. So that's how the story goes. Students, I want you to take a screenshot and actually practice it. Let's see if you are able to do it. Uh, I am giving, going to give you a sneak peek of the answers also, but be the good children and don't look at the answers before you have tried doing it yourself. The answers are only for you to check. And I also have another small activity. Now that we have, we know about the characters, I want you to match the characteristics of these characters. So here I have Ozabel before me. What do you think? Which words describe Ozabel? Mm, Ma'am, if we see the second option mm. fits the bill here, uh, fat and uh, he speaks with an American accent and uh, he's also clever and deceptive. Absolutely right. So uh, that that was Ozabel, and we also have Fowler, the writer here. So Fowler is the young writer, romantic, and uh, eager for adventure. That is the option number three. And the third one becomes easy then, guys. <laughs> so Max is our slender, crafty uh, spy who holds a gun in hand. And that's Max. Mm. And that's Max. So. Uh, that's Max. Uh, I hope the students uh, realize that all three of them have, uh, have different, this, uh, uh, different characters. characteristics. And, uh, and now we have a small um, activity for the students and that is the spinning the wheel. So um, the teachers can also try it in the classroom. And so this is our uh, uh, wheel spin. And what we are going to do is we are going to spin the wheel and let's see uh, Tanvi. So we can give it to the students and based on you know what comes, so, uh, so the green column, so whoever is sitting on that side, you know, uh, the side which comes towards the arrow has to answer the question. So, uh, so that is the spinning the wheel activity and these questions are for, uh, as you can see, for critical thinking uh, to think about situations that would uh, you know, that would have affected the outcome of the story. So, uh, one of the questions, like I said, that why was Max easily deceived by Ozabel? Why do you think Tanvi something like that could have happened? So, because uh, Audible, uh, Ozabel didn't fit into the character of a spy. Yes. So, most of the time what happens is that we judge people based on, based on what they look like and yeah. that is not a good good way to uh, work on you know people people skills so uh, it's it's not uh, what the media generally points out to us that this is what a person should look like to be able to uh, to be able to do that so right. and that's why we say that uh, we never should uh, judge the book by its cover yes so let's spin the wheel again uh, once and see what we see what comes and uh, so the yellow yellow side it talks about what elements in the story create suspense. So, which elements in the uh, story are responsible for the suspense? So, we have, you know, the uh, setting, uh, which is all about, uh, uh, you know, there is a sense of danger and expectancy. The, then there are plot twists. 
that yeah. uh, uh, you know you are expecting something and then something else happens and uh, so the twists in the plot also add to the suspense and finally we have these you know special characters uh, which are different than what we expect them to be absolutely so ma'am i'm sure the mm. students are going to spin the wheel further and they'll be able to answer all the queries mm. so uh, let's move on further and uh, ma'am has already explained the keywords but let's have a look at the keywords once again okay. presence of mind suspense irony Ma'am, would you like to give some homework? Yes. So, as homework, I would want our students to write the character analysis of the unconventional Ozable. Uh, and, and the modified version of this homework would be? Yes. So, for our uh, challenged uh, students, uh, we have, uh, I have made uh, the answer in the form of fill in the blanks. So, I would want them to uh, write the character sketch by filling the blanks. Okay, mm -hmm. and the students can send this homework in this particular format. Let's have a look at the format. Firstly, you have to write your name and then the class, class 10th, your school's name and the address and followed by the expert's name. Please write here Dr. Rajni Jamini. And then the date of this session, which is 18th of June 2024, followed by a photograph of yours, which is optional. It is not mandatory. Either you can put it or you can simply skip it. So in this format, please send your homeworks to us on the email ID, which is dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. Ma'am, thank you so much for being with us today. It was a wonderful chapter and the way you explained each and everything, not just the story, but the setting, but the uh, layout, even the words and with the activity. This was a fun package. Thank you so much. I hope our students enjoy the story and uh, enact it in their classrooms or with their friends and do lots of thinking around the lesson. Absolutely, ma'am. Thank you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you to our sign language interpreter as well. Thank you so much, Pracy, for interpreting each and every word to all our viewers. And uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you to each and every viewer. And I'm sure, like uh, Dr. Rajni Jamini said, that uh, you must have enjoyed this entire session just the way I did. And uh, for any queries, any questions, you can always contact us. With this, we are wrapping up this particular program where we discussed chapter number three, and that was The Midnight Visitor. And uh, please keep on watching Evidya channels because we have a lot of programs for you on different subjects, on different topics. So keep your questions ready and to watch them all. I'm Tanvi Kurana and I'll take a leave of you. Namaskar, have a good day.